Now, a lot of people think engineers don't have uh, emotions, and we do, so I came up with a set of emojis just for uh, engineers. So, uh, there, and you have to look carefully. That one right there, that is uh, happy. Uh, that's sad. That's mad, amused, love. There's a little differences here. Disgust, surprise, joy. And then that one right there, that one's uh, probably the biggest. That means uh, the project is finished. Hi there, I am Don McMillan, and I do lots of corporate comedy. How much corporate comedy? So much so, I have put my entire act on PowerPoint. That's right, I'm a PowerPoint comedian. But I love my job. Really, I do. Think about it. Every day I get to go to work, I get to hear people laugh. I have the best job in the world, if you ask me. I truly do love it. Because I'm surrounded by laughter, and laughter is so good for you. Think about, think about what laughter does for you. Okay, I have a slide to actually show you. It, it reduces stress, right? It actually releases endorphins. You feel better when you're laughing. It, it lowers your blood pressure. It has real health effects, and it burns calories. You're losing weight. I mean, can there be anything better than laughter? So hopefully, we laugh every day. And if you're thinking of adding laughter to your next corporate event, which I highly suggest, remember, not every comedian is the same. Not every comedian is perfect for every event. No bad words, bad thoughts, bad intentions, and words. You know the seven, don't you, that you can't say on television? I love George Carlin. Really, truly, he was one of my inspirations for getting into stand-up comedy. Fantastic comedian, uh, Richard Pryor, Sam Kinison, all amazing comedians in their all right, but really all bad choices for corporate comedy events. And it's pretty obvious why. They're just not appropriate. That's why I came up with this video, actually. I call it the three most common mistakes when choosing a corporate comedian. And the first one, uh, just from that one sketch, the seven dirty words, it needs to be clean. It needs to be appropriate for a comedy audience. Um, comedians are always asking me all the time, I mean, what's appropriate for corporate? So I made a quick list, here's a little PowerPoint list, about what kind of humor to avoid when you're doing corporate comedy. So here we go. Number one, off-color or dirty jokes. I think we just made that point with Mr. George Carlin. Ethnicity, no ethnic jokes, not appropriate whatsoever. Gender, sexual orientation, don't get anywhere near it, just a bad idea. Disabilities, diseases, disorders, they're not funny, don't stay away from them. Religion, sex, these are all obvious. Age, hot issues, abortion, guns, politics, all to be avoided when it comes to comedy in a corporate environment. The personal lives of employees, not a good idea, and then finally, basically, Anything that would get you fired at a job, a comic should not do. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Has everybody had enough to drink? Okay, good. That makes my job a whole lot easier. A joke that works at a comedy club may not work at all at a corporate event. You need something that fits the group, what they all share as a common. They're a, they're a unique audience. You need a comic that can tap into that. You don't want a generic comic who just comes in with a canned act. You know, cats are different than dogs. D don't you hate it when you don't want that kind of thing. You want to make this a special event. Somebody who understands their world, their culture, you know, talking about IT issues or sales and marketing. Things that they all have to deal with every day. And by the way, this brings me to the point, it can't be just something that you find funny because the crowd may not all be like you. It may be an international crowd. It may be an all-sales crowd or an all-engineering crowd. You have to find somebody that can tap in and make it a special show just for your audience. You don't want just a canned comedy show. This is, inter this is very much an uh, information age uh, phenomenon. My sister wants to be a computer uh, security expert. This is a hot job, man. Everyone wants to be a computer because security is so important. Well, there's two career paths my sister can take. Right now, uh, path one, she's a forensic analyst. Someday she hopes, hopes to be a forensic lab director and then a chief security official and then a highly paid security consultant. She'd make, make millions of dollars. She figures that'll take about 20 years. That's path one. Then there's path two she's considering. Over path two, there's a hacker, criminal, convict, uh, highly paid security consultant. <laughs> that'll take you about two years. Uh, 14 months with good behavior. So you want to find a comedian that fits your audience. Not just your comedy taste, but everybody in the crowd. Which brings me to the third point, just as important. You want to find a comedian who works with you ahead of time to develop material, to learn about your group, to find out their likes and their dislikes, where are they from, what are they into. That way you can make the show special. Laughs are so much better when they're specific. 
to the people or the group or the issues that they're dealing with. That's really can make it successful. The other point is you can relax. You know what the comedian is going to talk about. You don't have to sit there worried about what they're going to talk about. You can sit back and relax during the show and laugh with everybody else. And that makes the whole event more successful. Also, it helps me as a comedian. I can write better jokes if I work with you ahead of time. I can deal with subjects and help relieve stress. Perfect example. I did a show several years ago with a company I will call uh, Acme Incorporated. They shall be not unnamed. Uh, but they had been involved in this big scandal, big corporate scandal, about a year before I was performing, where their CEO and president had been throwing these lavish parties for his wife and spending millions and millions of the company's money. And it was a really bad situation. And I came in a year later at this executive meeting, and they, they wanted me to perform and, and add laughter. And they, they were worried and ahead of time. I was like, oh, are you going to talk about this? What are you going to say? So we developed jokes together. And this is what we decided as a group, and it went over great. I came out, and this is the joke I did. I said, hey, it's really nice to be here at Acme Incorporated. Uh, and there's good news and bad news to me being here. The uh, good news is I get to perform for all of you tonight. The bad news is if I'd been here two years ago, I would have been paid $6 million for this show. There was a little pause and a big laugh. All that tension was relieved. I dealt with it. I could move on. And we all had a great night laughing together. I love personalizing shows. It makes it so much more special. Uh, here's an example of one I did for a company uh, called Mentor Graphics, where I was working again with their executive team at a, uh, an awards banquet, so I wanted to pick on their executives a little bit, so here's how I did it. So what if someday they made a movie about Apple? Why not Mentor Graphics the movie? Who would play who in Mentor Graphics the movie? So I put my mind to it, I found some pictures on the internet. Here's an interesting thing I found. I actually did a bit similar to this in uh, 2003, and uh, I, I was looking at the pictures, there was, Look, look at Greg's picture in 2003, then there's 2013. I realize as Greg gets older, you know what's happened? His glasses are getting thicker. <laughs> He's not aging, but his glasses, so pretty much by 2033. <laughs> oh, you like that? Then, then I've had Wally. Wally was freaky, man, because I looked at... Well, this is the picture I had for Wally. Then I realized, Wally, that's... Wally's not... <laughs> what is going on with you? What are you eating? What are you drink? Is there a JPEG of you that's aging somewhere? <laughs> and then, it's amazing, I looked at Don. Now, Don looked a lot different than when I met him. And, uh, and that, back to uh, 2003... Uh, <laughs> had a little more hair. Then I think that'll be him in 2023. <laughs> And then eventually, uh, <laughs> just aging. So there you have it. Those are the three most common mistakes that I see people make when they're picking a corporate comedian. You want to find one that is clean and appropriate, one that fits your audience, that tells jokes and humor that everybody in the audience can relate to and understand and get. And then finally, you want a comedian that will work with you to make it special. Because you, know you want people laughing hard, and they're going to laugh harder when the joke is something they can really relate to. The more specific the comedy, the better it is. And, and I'm I actually, there's a fourth thing to this list, which is, it's got to be funny. you got to do all those things, and it's still got to be funny. That's a corporate comedian's job. You gotta fit all those things in there, but at the end of the day, it's still gotta be funny. And uh, I, am a, I am a nerd. I am not a geek, I am a nerd. And what's the difference? You're probably asking, what's the difference? Actually, I have a, a Venn diagram to show you the difference. Uh, <laughs> I'm one of the few comics working in Venn diagrams. <laughs> It takes three things, three things to be a nerd. You have to be smart, socially awkward, and obsessed. All three of those things, and you are, in fact, a nerd. <laughs> geeks, on the other hand, they really are just smart and obsessed. Because they, they're like in the comic books. Comic book geeks, Star Trek geeks, they get dressed up, they do cosplay, they, they go out and they intermingle. Not nerds. We stay at home and don't do anything. We text and email. That's about it. Now, if you're smart and socially awkward, uh, you're a dork. <laughs> And nobody wants to be a dork. So if you're a dork, you just get obsessed and you move into the nerd region. <laughs> That's smart. And if you're socially awkward and obsessed, uh, you're a stalker. 